Heck, it's starting to rain. Okay, what happened here, huh? Raining that one little section, although it was windy for a brief time. It looks like it blew away a lot of the clouds. And today was the official unveiling of the Mavic Air 2. Did we actually learn anything new or was everything leaked out ahead of time? Actually, there were some interesting information, I guess. I guess to start off, you can see all their official trailers and stuff like that. As usual, I guess they all look professional. Whether or not a person can actually do that when they take it out of the box is another story. But yeah, you can basically see the specs for the most part were very accurate in terms of what was released like out there on the internet and all that. Although some stuff seems like it's entirely gimmicky in terms of marketing, which makes me wonder if they're doing this to combat things like the EVO 2. But first I saw that it captured 8K video. I'm like, no way that thing captures 8K video. Apparently it does capture 8K time lapse video. Okay, that's a huge difference in just capturing like 8K video in general. So that's more along the lines of that hyperlapse that a lot of people have seen. Basically they can do with the Mavic 2 Pros and stuff like that. And for the video, it says it actually shoots 4K. And the interesting thing about the 4K is that it shoots in 60 frames per second according to this. So that's pretty high. That's actually higher than the Mavic 2 Pro. And for 1080p, you can apparently shoot at 240 FPS. So I guess this thing would be really useful for people shooting action shots and really wants those slow motions, I guess, types of effects. The flight time is as expected, 34 minutes for example, and it does have the OcuSync, so not much of a surprise there. It says for the 4K, it actually shoots at 120 Mbps, which is actually really good. So that's really good quality for, I guess, a drone this smaller size. But overall, is it a replacement for the Mavic 2 Pro? And even based on before, it sounded like no way. The Mavic 2 Pro has things like a larger sensor and all that, 10-bit video and so forth. Is there any drawbacks to this? It's basically my initial thought where potentially for this Sony IMX586 that they're using for things like the picture and all that, it might not be as, I guess, good as you would hope potentially because this is actually one that's used on the older smartphones. And I know it says 48 megapixels and stuff like that, but realistically this type of sensor, it's not as good as like say some of the more modern day ones. There's some sites that do a good job explaining this too. Basically people who focus on things like smartphones and all that. For example, showing how with this sensor it might have 48 megapixels, but what they're doing is they're cramming smaller pixels into kind of, I guess you could say, almost the same amount of space as other sensors. So the other sensors have bigger pixels, so it's actually, in many ways, the difference might actually be worse in some cases. So that's what you would have to keep in mind. A fun fact about that sensor actually, the Autel Evo, the 8K one, actually uses this exact same sensor. It makes me wonder why a lot of these drone companies are opting for the older stuff just to cut costs, for example. Again, I know a lot of people would just look at paper specs and say, well, this one's automatically better, of course. Like in this case, like it kills, for example, the Mavic 2 Pro. No, I don't think so overall in terms of the picture quality based on what is here anyways, if you actually dive down to it. And of course, we can see the final images of everything. And the thing I was most interested in actually was the controller again. Because before with all those leaked images from the FCC and so forth, it looks so humongous. And you can see it here and it makes me wonder with this smartphone attached there. With this design, I'm actually wondering if you can actually use a tablet. Because I know a lot of people actually use that for their drones and so forth. But yeah, if that's actually the maximum height, it makes me wonder if you can actually use those still. I think this announcement too would make it more apparent that with their future revisions of let's say the Mavic 3 or something like that, they probably will go something like 6K and all that to compete with the competition as well. So would you actually buy this, I guess, if you were looking for a drone? What would people say in terms of, I guess, this compared to the Mavic 2? I know some people, again, they'll look at the paper and say things like, Whoa, this one shoots 60 frames per second. It must automatically be better and all that. I still think the 2 Pro, for example, just by the sounds of it, is probably going to give you a better picture. And I guess this one basically eliminates the Mavic Pro, the original ones, and the Platinum. Hey, I'm even still using that still. I haven't even upgraded, huh? So would you actually get this drone? I know for me, I would probably still hold off personally just because it just seems like something's right around the corner for the bigger drones. And size-wise, again, just by the time you add in all the extra batteries, like their Fly More bundles and all that, 
case-wise isn't that much difference like to me personally if you're putting it in your backpack so I don't know, I'd rather get like the better quality something like those pros marketing wise I would imagine for DJI it's basically trying to suppress the sales of any potential evil 2 interests and at the same time I guess with this pandemic and stuff I'm assuming a lot more people are interested in getting something to fly like they're doing nothing and I know various countries they're giving people I guess federal aid to spend on whatever they want to recover like economically so will people actually use stuff like that for this drone which makes me wonder if that was kind of the idea to release this right now too even though a lot of people would say what a horrible time to release a new product during a pandemic so how about you guys anybody actually planning to get this or again are you just going to wait it out and see I know some people are just waiting to see more results from actual real people using it, not like corporate trailers or people who are paid basically to use it and say it's the best thing in the world. And I guess with the factor of the size, it might be more portable, but will it handle in the harsh wind, for example? Like I know the Mavic Mini many times, you know, with the slightest breeze, that thing basically gets blown away. Like this, it'll probably be more stable than that, but probably not as stable as the bigger one. So I guess that's another thing to think about when you're looking for a drone right now. Alright, see you guys later.